Vice President Kamala Harris just making history, accepting for the first time as a woman of color the Democratic nomination for president. In a speech that ran almost 40 minutes long, she introduced herself as the child of an Indian and Black American, as a former prosecutor, as a senator, but also took aim at her opponent, Donald Trump, several times. At one point, saying Donald Trump is in many ways an unserious man, but saying the consequences of putting Donald Trump back in the White House are extremely serious. Kamala Harris asked Americans to consider what would happen if we give him power again, as she made the case in the United Center here in Chicago on this final night of the Democratic Convention, Joe, that they should put her in power instead. That's right. As we now see Kamala Harris on Bloomberg TV with the second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, spoke earlier this week, standing by for the big balloon drop. Of course, Kaylee, you're right. Almost 40 minutes at the podium and not only a biographical tale here, but counterpunching on just about every line of attack that we've heard from Donald Trump and Republicans aimed at Kamala Harris and her running mate, Tim Walls, also on the stage now as the two couples get together here and showing the ticket that has now become formalized in Chicago. She talked a lot about Donald Trump, yeah. issue by issue, went through the border, went through his character, went to Israel as well, where she made some news, mm -hmm. trying to appeal to both sides as they now wave to the crowd. Kaylee, there are more than 100,000 red, white, and blue balloons <laughs> that are set to drop on these delegates tonight. Which speaks to the festivities of the moment, and again, a historic moment that we are in. And as we reflect on the words we just heard from the vice president and Democratic nominee, back with us now, our political panel, Rick Davis, partner at Stonecourt Capital, and Jeannie Shanzano, senior democracy fellow with the Center for the Study of the Presidency and Congress. And you obviously are still hearing people going wild on the floor yes. of the United Center. A lot of energy in that arena. As the balloons come down, you can see them on 1980, Bloomberg this TV. is not. <laughs> no, no, indeed. And, and we want to get thoughts now from Rick and Jeannie. Rick, you, of course, said that for much of this convention over the last several days, there hadn't been enough attacking Donald Trump. She talked about him by name for most of this speech. At one point, she said dictators are rooting for Trump because they know Trump won't hold autocrats accountable because he wants to be an autocrat himself. How did she strike the balance to you of attacking Donald Trump while also talking about herself? Yeah, look, I think this was a fair balance, right? This was a sober speech. Last night, we heard Oprah give a joyful speech. This was sober night, and she definitely took it to Donald Trump in a way, frankly, no other person on the stage yeah. in four nights did it. So I think she sees this as a contest between wills. She's ready to take him on directly. And I would say she took him on using his own words. She didn't quote the 2025 project. Yeah, yeah. She quoted Donald Trump over and over again, deeming his positions unacceptable to the greater part of America. And Donald Trump was, I won't say live tweeting, but live posting on his Truth Social platform. Jeannie, you had you had your eyes, uh, I guess, on the oppo or the counter-programming during this. But as the Democrat at the table, how did this strike you tonight, the tone and the balance between introducing herself, biography, and actual policy? Yeah, I mean, it, it was fascinating because there was an abrupt shift from the biography where she talked yeah, about right. her mother passed away in 2009, never saw her daughter achieve everything she has and how much of an impact she had on her life, all the way into this issue by issue by issue that you were just talking to Rick about, attack on what Do she says Donald Trump is going to do to this nation. Yeah. And she pivoted from the watchword of the election so far weird to say they are simply out of their minds yeah. when it comes to reproductive rights. One of the many things that if you look at Truth Social, that really drove Donald Trump mad. And he had a very extended screed on Truth Social about that. Boy, yeah, that's for sure. He's really busy tonight, kind of like <laughs> all of us watching this. Let's jump into the balloon drop right now with Bloomberg's Anne-Marie Hordern, who is somewhere on that floor at the convention. Anne-Marie? Oh, it's absolutely electric on this floor. I just spoke to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer again following the speech, and he said it was pitch perfect. I think one thing that's very clear, Kamala Harris is able to come into this race and close that gap. It's like a relief bull market rally at this convention. Remember, this was really unthinkable about a month ago. Looking through some of the policies, though, whether it was the economy, talking about the fact that no one in the middle class will get a tax raise, reproductive rights, 
foreign policy or the border. What you see Kamala Harris doing is picking and choosing from the Biden-Harris campaign and administration that she was part of. And I think the next few weeks as we go into that debate on September 10th, she's really going to ask, get asked some hard questions for voters to really understand what differentiates her from Joe Biden. All right, Bloomberg's Anne-Marie Hordern on the floor as the balloons are bouncing around. Thank you so much. Still with us, our political panel, Rick Davis and Jeannie Shanzano. At this point, we can basically declare, Rick, the convention and the party over. Kamala Harris now has to do this final stretch of 75 days to actually win this thing. Did she improve her odds with this speech tonight, or is this race still just as tight as it was before she took the podium? Yeah, look, in a divided country the way it is, the race is going to be tight all the way to the end, right? No one is going to really gain a decisive advantage between now and Election Day. I would say the convention writ whole, I think, has improved her chances of coming out of here, continuing to have the momentum. Remember, she came into the can- into the convention with a great head of a momentum. She was able to take on the mantle of the change candidate while being the vice president of an unpopular administration. And so I don't think she's lost a bit of that. She has established the speech as a change speech, even though it mimicked, as Anne-Marie said, almost every policy of the Biden administration. So right now she's getting away with it. We'll see how long she can make that last. Well, we've got another week here of summer that it's on to Labor Day, uh, Jeannie, and and a presidential debate on the 10th of September with such a small time frame here. You've referred to it, 75 days left. Do these two candidates just get hotel rooms in Pennsylvania and Michigan for the rest of this campaign? They do. They are going to be living in those swing states, particularly, as you mentioned, Pennsylvania and Michigan, Wisconsin, um, adding North Carolina. Um, And, you know, one small point to make, we noticed she did not wear white today like many of the women on the floor. And you guys were talking about the history making that this is tonight. She is not playing into that, at least with her dress today. She did not want to draw attention to her, you know, history making as the first woman of color to get this nomination in terms of wearing that suffragette white. She chose to go another way. She also didn't lean in on her role as vice president. A lot on prosecutor, not a lot on VP, and not a lot on Joe Biden once again. Think of how many times we heard Donald Trump versus Joe Biden in that speech. How true. Well, it's really something, uh, Kaylee, as we watch these images now, a chance for the Harris Walls campaign to soak up the energy along with thousands of delegates who have made their way here to Chicago. This is it, the grand finale, as we have experienced together in the first draft of history on Bloomberg TV and radio. Now it's to the roadshow, Kaylee, and the first debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. And of course, she has promised that by the end of the month of August, she will be sitting down for a big interview. Tonight, we did see the vice president and Democratic nominee reading from a teleprompter. That's right. Answering questions from the press from an interviewer might be the next challenge ahead for her, in addition, of course, to competing in the swing states against Donald Trump as they both try to claim the presidency in November. Well, we're going to be talking a lot, likely, about a convention bounce here as pollsters get into the field starting tomorrow. That might be the next leg in this story Mm -hmm. as we bring you daily coverage of this historic campaign on Bloomberg TV and radio. That does it for us here in Chicago, live at the 2024 Democratic National Convention. Thanks for spending the week with us. With Kaylee Lines, I'm Joe Matthew on Bloomberg TV and radio.